Hey everybody, welcome back this week as we continue our walk through the Westminster Shorter Catechism. Over the last several weeks, we've been looking at the Second Commandment. We looked specifically at the commandment found in Exodus 20, verses 4 through 6. Uh, the following week, we looked at what was required in the Second Commandment. And last week, we talked about what was forbidden, or what is forbidden in the Second Commandment. This week, we're looking at question 52, which says, what are the reasons annexed to the second commandment? And the answer is the reasons annexed to the second commandment are God's sovereignty over us, his propriety in us, and the zeal he hath to his own worship. So annexed, uh, it's just a, something added, okay? Now not something added in the sense of um, a, a human addition, but something that's rooted in the Bible that actually adds to um, this commandment, to support this commandment. Uh, so think of reasons uh, annexed as reasons added. Okay? Um, but think of it as each of these questions are important when we look at them. So this, we may just say, oh, well, this is addition, this is something else in the Bible, but this is, it's got its own question and answer because um, it's important. We should take note. We should pay attention. You'll see these uh, reasons annexed in several of the other commandments as we walk through them as their own separate question. Uh, these things lead to, to show us some of the fundamental truths that we find in these commandments. So as we look at these, the first reason that we see listed here in this answer is God's sovereignty over us. We see in Psalm 95, verse 6, it says, O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. God's sovereignty over us. He is our Lord and Savior, our Maker, our Ruler, our King. He is the sole authority over us. It belongs to Him and Him alone. Now we look at Psalm 45, verse 11, we see, it says, and the king will desire your beauty, since he is your Lord, bow to him. His propriety in us, propriety being ownership, his ownership in us. This commandment says, I am the Lord thy God. Uh, the Lord owns us, and he also owns his worship as well. His worship belongs to him and him alone. And so we see... In Exodus 34, verses 13 and 14, it says, You shall tear down their altars and break their pillars and cut down their ashram. You shall worship no other god, for the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. So we see in this answer this zeal, this great energy or strong desire. Um, it says this zeal he hath for his own worship, his own his desires for his own worship. Anything outside of that is offending, provoking to him, inciting him to anger. It even says, it gives us this warning in the second commandment. It says, I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. <clears throat> so we see that we are to worship him. He owns the worship, and we are to worship him the way we, he commands us to. So as we see in this, all these reasons are annexed are um, God-centered. They're not about what we want or what we desire or what makes us happy when we go to worship. It's about God. So worship is God-centered. We see God's sovereignty over us. We talked about his attributes sometimes um, in, in several of these. Um, it says here that he's a jealous God. And not jealous in a sinful way because God is sinless. He is the holy of holies. Um, he, however, is warranted jealousy when we do not worship him in the manner that he commands. Think of it in the sense of uh, a husband and wife. Or those that maybe aren't married, think of it as maybe a, a boyfriend or girlfriend. But think about the affection that that spouse or, or boyfriend or girlfriend show to you. Do you want 
would you feel jealous if that affection was being shown to another instead of you? You would. In the same sense, we see here that God is jealous when we do not show him the affection he deserves. Uh, again, thinking, I'll use it as, as the, uh, the marriage and as a marriage bond because it's talked about specifically in the Bible outside of a, being a boyfriend or a girlfriend, but you, you commit yourself to that spouse. That affection is deserving to them and them alone, that spouse alone. It does, it does not go to any other. So worship should be protected in the same way. It should be preserved just as God intended marriage to be. Um, so when we come to God in worship, we are responding to him because he sought us first. He, gave, he seeks us, gives us his affection and care, and we are to respond by showing our affection to him through worship. And that worship is supposed to be, or affection is supposed to be to him and him alone, the one and only true living God. And so anything outside of that is sinful. Outside of that provokes God to jealousy. Think of it in the sense, again, of marriage. Think of it as, as to share that worship with any other besides to God himself. It's like committing spiritual adultery. Think of it in that sense. Um, so this week when we look at these reasons annexed this week, it says the reasons annexed to the second commandment are God's sovereignty to us, his propriety in us, and the zeal he hath to his own worship. 